What is going on guys, it is Lely 2 sexy and this is a video on how to beat Superstar difficulty and a few tips on manual passing as well. I'm actually making this video on request from a few people that wanted tips with one and some wanted it from both so I thought this is the best way to go on about it. But if you guys want any tips with anything or help with anything, just put it in the comment section. If I think it needs a video, I'll make a video. If it just needs a quick reply, I'll do my best with the reply. So on with this video, the first thing you saw my settings and it's best to have all the auto passing and auto assists off because it's just better to have all the control yourself. The reason I actually picked Liverpool was because they're pretty much an average team and I know everyone doesn't enjoy playing with Barcelona and Madrid all the time so if I'm doing it with an average team you should be able to do it with nearly any team to be honest. Now the first thing I'm going to talk about is how to attack the computer on Superstar difficulty and there's no one way about it. You can't just get the ball out wide and put cross into the box and think easy goals and you can't just play it down the middle with three balls over the top and think I get a one on one it'll be easy. You have to change your approach and mix it up and what the fuck was I thinking with Stuart down in there? It's Stuart fucking Downing. What was I thinking? What I'm going to actually do is in this video I'll interrupt myself to tell you what I was thinking about at the time. So hopefully that's more insightful and helpful. But as I was saying, you need to change your approach for goal because if you become predictable the computer will sniff you out a lot quicker. And what they do is they also build themselves on this perfect counter attack. So when they realise how you keep attacking them, they have this almost perfect counter attack which people find it very hard to defend against. So if you mix it up, they're always trying to change their counter attacking approach and then they'll make mistakes as well. And my next tip is, I know it sounds very obvious, but you've got to control the pace of the game. Look how slow I get here. I don't always approach down the middle, oh look what I do with Lucas Leva here. I just make sure there's no gap on that side and then the computer took care of the other side. But I'll talk more in depth about the defending after, but there'll be a few snippets where I'll have to interrupt if I'm talking about attacking. Just so you can take a note of what I'm you know, going to refer back to. But as I was saying... You need to have control of the pace of the game because if you play at the computer's pace you will be the one that's constantly defending and counter-attacking with players out of position and you're going to see an example of this now because when I say playing out of position I don't mean you know players standing where they shouldn't be but this is an example. This is a player out of position if you ask me because Kadira shouldn't be the one leading a counter-attack. There's nothing wrong with him like joining a counter-attack but because they're all over the place Kadira ends up being the one furthest forward and a counter-attack when you've geared up for Ronaldo being your star man for the counter attack or Benzema and you've got Kadera there then that makes that attack weaker because obviously he doesn't have the same skill levels as them lot. Now another benefit of controlling the pace of the game and it also works for playing against people online is that you get to see how they are set up and very very quickly you will know how to attack against them. So in this match I knew that Madrid were very compact and I knew I had a lot of width to work with but I knew I didn't have a target in mind so I couldn't just put a lot of crosses in and expect to win a lot in the air so what I was doing this match was I was just trying to pull them like left then right and get players out of position and when they give you shooting space take it because what will happen is if you don't shoot they'll just sit back deeper and deeper and defend in the box and then you'll find it very hard to get in there and you know get a very good chance away so if you start to shoot from distance they start to come at you as well and how the fuck was that not a penalty I don't know the computer got away with some ridiculous things here and defensively you can see what I did there, I put up a lot of pressure high up the pitch but here look I'm sitting back, sitting back thinking until I think that dribbler is a threat towards goal I'm not going to approach him and leave a gap behind for an easy pass to be played to someone else so that's why I stayed back there and just made it really hard and really narrow off his options but as I'll get more into the defence after but as I was saying it's good to take off them shots when them long range shots when you can because when the computer thinks that you can start to take more long range shots they start to not sit back in the box and start to approach you and leave gaps in the box and then you know you have more space to work with then. So now I'll start to talk about the defensive side of the game. Here you can see here that I've decided to stay back with Carragher just to basically cut off the option of a pass to Ronaldo or he could have passed it to Ronaldo but it would have not have been an easy task for Ronaldo. Well maybe in real life all you have to do is probably knock it five yards either side of Carragher and Carragher would have been gassed out on the floor. But here I actually, a bit look here actually because as I tried to force the game I win the ball back high up the pitch, get the ball to Downing and then watch that run from Jared. it's already happened but you'll see it in the replay, that makes space in the box and then it becomes a simple pass. Look Jared. he runs into like you know into nowhere and he drags the defender out and you need to start using the trigger runs as well so that's a good you know another good piece of advice to just trigger some runs off just to make space and let people run offside if they want. If they drag a defender there with them, they've created more space for you to pass into and then you can look to pass to someone else. So that's a thing I do a lot here. You'll actually see that I've set off a lot of trigger runs. Whether I use all the trigger runs or not is another thing. But I'll also set off trigger runs if I know I'm going to pass it to him in two passes time because then he'll be in a more advanced position and 
to you know a more threatening position but back to the defending and like I said about the attacking side of the game you need to mix it up and change your approach how I do this you'll see me do it a lot with the midfield because it's a lot less risky and you're not going to see all the examples I'm talking about in this video because they're not all required in this match but I'll talk you through them anyway in this match you will see me do a lot of this first one where I'll just run up to the player with the ball like the opposition player with the ball and I won't actually put a challenge in I'll just give him a decision like make him make a decision go do something because when I commit a player what will happen is it'll take time for him to come back to defending and put pressure on from the front so I just run up there say go on go do something when he does it I'll chase back with that player and then it adds more pressure for the next player now the second tactic I'm going to talk about is slightly aggressive but it's cautious as well so what I'll do is I'll go rushing in with the first man and I'll put in a standing challenge if they evade it what I'll do with the other two players I'll hold my position and just try to cut off all passing options and then I'll wait for the third guy to come back and put another challenge in but then a slightly more aggressive one so it's a little twist on this one I'll send two players flying in with a you know standing challenge and then the third one just be the cautious one but then when I'm getting really aggressive all I'll do is I'll send two of them in with sliding challenges but then you've got to be very careful you don't you normally only want to do that to stop a counter attack and basically say look either I'm gonna win this ball or you're gonna get taken out you're not getting past this point so normally that's that third option I was talking about there was just to like basically stop yourself when you think you're in a position that if he gets past me here I'm screwed so that's the only time you normally go with sliding challenges now when it comes to defending with the last line of defense so with your actual defenders what you'll see me do quite a lot is is that I will back backtrack all the way up to the edge of my own box and then I think okay now I have to do something because it, it's getting too dangerous and at max I'll only go like look to go back towards the penalty spot and then have to do something now when you're backtracking one of two things will happen either the attacker will slow down and it will give time for your defenders to come back and then outnumber him or he will look to attack your defender and while you're backtracking you will then find an easier time to actually go and lunge in for the tackle and when you're one on one the last thing you actually ever want to do is slide in because then you're making it a lot easier for him and the only time I would ever actually recommend sliding in when you're one on one with an attacker is when you think okay if I don't slide in or I keep standing up he's going to score regardless because of the position and you know the player ability so you could easily skip past your player or he's in a position where the shots is really easy to take on so the only time I'd ever actually recommend sliding in is if you think if I don't slide in he's going to score regardless or he's got a very very good chance of scoring so most of the time you stay on your feet make them work for that goal I'll actually show you a very good clip on this backtrack defending it'll be the very last clip that you'll see in this video is where I'm the one Reading defender and there's two Arsenal attackers so it's a bit harder than what I described but you'll see a very good example of it when you have so much control it'll feel that you're always two steps ahead of them and it'll feel like they're so predictable that you're actually controlling their attacks and when you get to that point then the superstar doesn't actually feel that hard anymore now moving on to the manual passing and the first thing I'm going to say is if you're using the d-pad you're going to have to scrap it because I was a big d-pad player as well but when you're using the d-pad you're actually limiting your passing angles and that defeats the whole purpose of manual passing so what I did was to get rid of that awkward feeling of the analog stick because I was really good with you know first person shooters using the analog stick but playing a football game with it I just found it really awkward so what I did was I went to the training menu and I normally play on superstar difficulty I took it down to is it professional I think or was it top player I just went down one level and I had went and played it like training match but I had 11 players on my team and then I had seven on the computer so it wasn't too much of a challenge to start off with I just wanted to get rid of that awkward feeling so once I got rid of that awkward feeling I went and put it like 11 versus 8 then 11 versus 9 then 11 versus 10 and 11 and so on and then I got it to a point where you know I was I was having 10 and they were having 11 and then it was 8 11 ah you know which two numbers I'm not allowed to say on the internet if I say them two numbers I get put away so quickly that I won't be able to actually make another video so we all know what I'm trying to say that is actually an inside job now I'm only joking now I need to stop coming out with this shit I don't know where I'm coming out with it from but yeah what I'm actually trying to say is that I actually make the training matches a lot harder so then when I go on to an actual match they become a lot easier so that's one tip I could actually say to groom yourself into the manual passing but the first thing I'll actually talk about in the input wise is that when you're playing manual passing you need to get the idea out of your head that a through ball is actually a long pass it is not the case because when you play manual passing when you do a L1 and R1 over the top you can spray one for 50 yards but in reality the actual 
um, through pass is actually as powerful as a grounded pass or even weaker to the point so I'd probably say only play a through ball over the top or even on the ground I'd say 20 to 30 yards at tops but just look at that for a killer through ball the weight of the pass and the angle was just perfect and I don't think you can actually do that on assisted passing because one of them normally goes wrong and when you actually do play this on manual passing and play a killer pass like this you feel so happy that you just want to whip one out and have a little celebration of your own okay maybe not that happy but you get what I mean you actually appreciate them killer passes a lot more than when you do on assisted passing and that's how it works in real life as well sometimes you appreciate the pass more than the actual finish so it actually brings out another side of the game as well and it's just brilliant now I'll actually go on to more input controls so if you're playing manual passing for the first time the first thing you're going to think about the lofted passes are why they're not going very far and why they're so flat all you have to actually do is hold down R2 and that adds a lot more height and a lot more distance on the kick so that doesn't mean you can't actually play a nice little lofted pass that's only 10 yards away all you do is hold down R2 and just give the lofted pass a little tap you can actually score some very creative goals the only actually limitation is your own imagination so you can actually score some really wonderful goals so there's not actually many more passing tips that I can actually give you on manual passing other than you've got to give it a lot of practice there's one little tip that I can give you that kind of helps throw off the computer and that's just before you actually play your pass just do a little angle change in the way you're dribbling so then they have to quickly adjust to that little angle change and that normally opens up a little gap or a little moment of lapse of concentration for the computer and it makes playing them passes that more that bit easier and you can get away with the odd astray pass and whatnot so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if you did enjoy it give it a thumbs up and I will actually make one of these a lot earlier for PES 2014 um, hopefully within the first month that the game comes out so if you did enjoy it remember to give it a thumbs up if you want to see more remember to subscribe oh actually wait there's one more thing I want to say and that's check out my other PES content there's one video I actually want you guys to look out for and that's in the Must League Online series it's episode 4 it's not actually uploaded yet it will be my next upload so come back and check that out very soon it's going to be a great episode it's just trust me when I say it's going to be a great episode so I hope you guys enjoy watching the rest of this video and thanks for watching guys